Hi, we are going to make a vocabulary diamond um, for our next reading selection. And so I'm gonna go ahead and fold my paper into four squares. <clears throat> and oops, I'm gonna go ahead and draw in my diamond. You guys are experts at doing this by now. So I'm drawing in my squares on both papers. Oops, this one didn't go so well. And then I'm putting X's in each box. So this selection that we're going to read is an interesting selection. We're going to learn about um, service dogs. And so this is sort of a nonfiction article that describes the process that dogs go through um, in order to train to become service dogs. And so a lot of the vocabulary words are going to relate to um, dogs being fostered. Um, lots of service dogs live with foster families where they learn how to be around people and around little kids. And once they've been with a foster family, then they receive specialized training. So um, in order to be a guide dog or to be a uh, support animal. Um, they have to have specialized training so that they can do that. So lots of these words are going to relate to or connect with service dogs, service dog training. All right. So I'm just putting my last few synonym lines in. All right. So um, our first word this week is foster. And so I'm going to go ahead and write in foster. I'm going to write my name to um, foster is our first word. Foster is a verb, and it means to bring up or to raise. Okay, so um, most dogs um, end up going from a puppy breeder or from wherever they're located first to a foster family so that they learn how to be around people when they're little puppies. Um, synonym for foster is encourage because foster can also mean that you teach somebody and you encourage somebody and you want them to be successful. And so that's kind of what a foster a family that fosters a dog is doing. They're encouraging the dog to learn how to be around people. All right, so the dog is going to go from wherever it's from the breeder or wherever the dog, maybe it's a dog that's in a shelter. Maybe it's a dog that's been bred by a breeder and it's going to go to a foster home. So that's kind of the first step. All right, second word we're gonna look at is confesses. Confesses is a verb. And it means to acknowledge or avow.
and discloses is our synonym. So if someone confesses something, they're telling um, almost like telling a secret, right? You're telling somebody something that um, is kind of personal, right? And usually, so you might say, um, I confess. I have a crush on, uh, let's see, what name should we say? Oh, Keanu, Keanu Reeves. I do have a crush on Keanu Reeves. <laughs> right, so if you confess, you're telling someone something that you probably shouldn't tell them. All right, third word is symbol. So um, a symbol is a thing which represents another thing. And it's a noun. And emblem is our synonym. So in the article, they're going to talk about how um, there are certain symbols that dogs need to understand. Um, like, for example, an example of a symbol, somebody who might use a um, who might use a service dog is somebody that's in a wheelchair. And in a lot of stores, you guys have probably seen that there are doors that autom automatically open. And sometimes they'll have a little emblem, a little symbol of a wheelchair on the door. And that just means that you just press that sim you press that little button and it, the door automatically opens. And so one of the things they have to train service dogs to do is to press that button, right? To take their little paw and press the button. And so they're gonna talk about that, how they train a dog to do that. That's not a normal dog behavior. Dogs don't press buttons. <laughs> not even naughty dogs like my dog Percy, they don't press buttons. So they have to actually specifically and explicitly train a dog to do that, to take its paw and press a button. So, um, boy, that's, I'm trying to remember exactly what that symbol looks like. So usually it's a circle. Usually it has a person. It has a big, huge wheel on a wheelchair. And then it has like a symbol that kind of looks like this, right? Like a person sitting in a wheelchair. All right, our next word is ceremony. And that's a noun. And ceremony is a formal solemn occasion. And synonym is right. So um, when a service dog finally graduates and learns all the things that it needs to know to actually become a service dog, um, it completes all of the training Sometimes they will have a ceremony, like a graduation ceremony for the dog and for the person who's going to get the service animal. So we'll draw a little, we'll say that graduation can be one of those ceremonies. So we'll draw a little, we'll draw a little diploma. Right, sometimes it's rolled up. and you're gonna graduate and you're gonna wear one of those awesome hats that is a graduation cap, right? That has like a little tassel on it. Okay, so the dogs, they actually have a ceremony for the dogs <laughs> to graduate because dogs that are helper dogs or service dogs are really smart and they've worked really hard. So they deserve to have a little ceremony to honor them for their hard work. 
All right, our next word is graduate, which you might use the same picture of a diploma, right? Graduate is a verb. And when you graduate, it means that you've mastered something. Like when you graduate from Linscott, you will have learned how to read and do math and you'll have learned about history and about art. And so when you graduate, you celebrate mastering knowledge and learning new things. So it means to receive a degree or a diploma. Right, and so we could still draw that same hat. So when you graduate, you get to wear a graduation hat. And it's sort of a special hat that signifies that you've learned all the things that you need to learn to move on. And learn more things. All right, our next word is performs. It's a verb and it is to carry out or to complete. And execute is the synonym I got. So in the article that we're gonna be reading, the dogs perform all kinds of really difficult tasks. One of the interesting things that they do is they teach the dogs to disobey. So for example, if I am visually impaired, if I can't see, which I kind of can't see, <laughs> but if I can't see and my guide dog and I are crossing the street and I still wanna cross the street, but I can't see anything and the guide dog sees a car coming, like maybe someone's breaking the law and they're driving when they shouldn't be driving, the dog has to know to disobey and to get me out of the way and to pull me out of the road, right? So they have to learn, It's I think it's called intelligent disobedience, that the dog has to actually know when to disobey the human because the human can't see, but the dog can. And the dog knows there's danger so the dog has to override the human and say, hey, look out, there's a car coming, right? So in this way, um, the dog performs. Um, again, that's another thing that's not a normal dog behavior, right? So the dog has to learn how to do that, to learn how to disobey intelligently. So performing means you're carrying out a task, you're completing a task. And when you are a dog, a service dog, I'm gonna draw, I'm so bad at drawing animals, you guys are gonna laugh. So when it's gonna look like an elephant, told you. <laughs> it's a terrible dog. So um, when you're a service dog, let's say that you're guiding somebody who is visually impaired, right? So um, this looks like an elephant. Hey, I got a service elephant. So um, when you're, give it a dog tail. So when you are a dog that is helping somebody who's visually impaired, they have a special harness. Most, most dogs have a special green vest that they wear. But if you're, if you're leading somebody around who is blind, you're gonna have a special wire, thing that's like a leash, but it's made out of wire. And it's made out of wire, so it's especially sensitive. So the dog is going to be able to complete its task of guiding you because it has this special harness on it. And the human holds on to the harness up here. This is the handle. And it's very sensitive so that the person who can't see can feel the slightest movement of the dog. 
Okay, the next word is reward. Obviously, if you're training a dog, you're gonna give them a reward if they do something that you want them to do. So a reward is a, is a thing given. for service or merit. And it is a noun. And benefit is the synonym that I found. So if you're a dog, you're going to get treats. And I have to tell you, uh, Miss Rose in our class gave my dogs a lovely Christmas present, just this big bundle of treats, and they are in love with them. Because I give them these other treats. I give them these chicken strips, and they get kind of bored and sick of the chicken strips. They love the new treats that Rose got them. So when you're training a dog, when they do something good, you give them a little treat. And when they do something naughty, you talk to them and you say, hey, don't do that. This looks like a mouse, not a dog. <laughs> mouse treats. So um, dogs like having treats as a reward. They also like having pats, right? Like being petted and encouraged. And when you say, good dog, good dog. Right, so that's a reward for them. Patiently is our last word. Patiently is an adverb. We just talked about adverbs last week or this week. So patiently describes how someone does something, right? So it's got an L-Y on it. Meekly is our synonym. And it means to forbear or endure. So at my old school, we had a librarian. She was, um, she basically just put books away. She was not really that much of a librarian, but she worked to put the books away in our library. And she was somebody who trains service dogs. And so she would bring her service dogs to the library and they would have to ignore all the kids. And so her dogs, when she'd bring in her service dogs into the library, we'd be running around in the library. It would be kind of noisy. We'd be putting books away. And her dog had to patiently sit there and not make eye contact with any of us. <laughs> because that's what they were being trained. Her dogs were being trained to ignore all the noise and the kids and the commotion and to just pay attention to her, right? And she never got up and walked around in the library. She always sat at the desk and her dog had this little vest on and her dogs would always just sit. They would just lay with their little legs underneath, their little paws underneath them. They would just lay underneath the desk. Here's their collars. And they had a little vest that said, service dog, don't bother me. Like they had little vests that said, don't pet me. <laughs> Leave me alone. And the reason why is because they wanted to train the dog just to not pay attention to any outside um, distractions, right? So her dogs had more focus than I have, more focus than any kids in my class, more focus than I had. They would just sit under the table and they would, you could tell the dog was just ignoring all of the noise, all of the craziness, all of the library sounds. And sometimes when she wasn't looking, I would try to get the dog, I would like wave at the dog or like, you know, try to pet the dog or make faces at the dog. And the dog would, the dogs would always just totally ignore me. It was awesome. <laughs> so 
that's they service dogs have to learn how to do that they have to not get distracted because their job is to protect and guide and help their owner and so they can't get distracted by any outside things that are going to keep them from their job right okay i hope this helped you um you're going to be looking up a lot of the words on your own and if you want to cheat and look at this i'm still going to record it for you in case you need to you need a little extra help okay all right thanks for joining me